Well, good morning to you, everyone. Welcome to this live broadcast. Coming to you once again live from Cambridge, England. That's where I'm broadcasting from here. That's where I live in Cambridge. So, um, welcome, welcome. I'm actually in the grounds this morning of a very historic church in the centre of Cambridge. It's called uh, St. Edward King and Martyr. And uh, there's a lot of uh, very strong history connected uh, to this church. So um, and I'll share a little bit of that in just a while. But welcome to you. As you join me here today, do um, type a hello and let me know where are you tuning in from uh, today from around the world. I might even take your photo for you. How about that? <laughs> But good morning, good morning. Anyway, do type a hello. Let me know what program, what program, what come all over the place this morning. What country you're viewing from, and uh, give us a give us a hello. Always good to uh, catch up with people. So I'm in the in the courtyard of St Edward, or the churchyard, should I say, of St Edward King and Martyr. And it was in this very church here that one of the great uh, British reformers uh, preached, and that was uh, Latimer, Hugh Latimer. And um, Hugh Latimer and Nicholas Ridley are famous because they were martyred in the streets in Oxford, England, and um, for the faith. And Latimer used to preach uh, in this church here right behind me. In fact, the original pulpit of Hugh Latimer is it preached in is still in this church so that's many hundreds of years old that pulpit but Latimer preached in the Reformation in this very church that is behind me I will be in the church uh, this evening uh, we've got a revival hub meeting uh, here in Cambridge tonight at 7:45 in the church here St Edward King and Martyr so all those that live locally to Cambridge, you are welcome we, further afield, but you're welcome to the meeting here, the Revival Hub meeting. Um, and that is Christians gathering from various churches around Cambridge, coming together, seeking revival, seeking the power of God to break out and the gospel to be preached, souls to be saved, bodies to be healed, devils to be cast out and disciples to be made so tonight we will be in here 745 um at st edward king and martyr right here in the middle of cambridge this is right in the heart of cambridge right next to literally if you go down the alleyway there a bit further you'll come straight out onto king's parade and there you would see the enormous gothic chapel king's college chapel world famous chapel the largest gothic chapel gothic style chapel in the entire world and that is literally 50 yards from where i'm sat now um you see a bit of the church if i can pan you up a bit there <laughs> there's the church sat uh, around the side here on a little bench that's handy so there we are Erin King God bless you nice to see you uh, anybody else that's uh, watching do make a comment let me know you're there we like to greet people if possible and um, so a lot of tremendous history Christian history here in Cambridge England Cambridge of course is famous for Cambridge universities one of the most famous universities in the world um, and uh, under under the umbrella of Cambridge University there are many separate colleges uh, as I mentioned to you just now for example one round the corner King's College um, it's well known Trinity College is nearby um, Gonville and Keys College Sydney Sussex College Queen's College um, there's many of them <laughs> they're all all around the whole of the city the center of Cambridge and, and the outlying areas a little bit further out as well very large footprint to Cambridge University as a whole but also the individual campuses if we could put it way of the colleges themselves um, 
So that's a bit of the history uh, of it there. Let me uh, take you for a little bit of a walk with me on the tripod. And um, <clears throat> we'll go over here. I was just having a bit of a sit down. I was actually going to get myself a cup of coffee, but it's nowhere open at the moment. It's too early. So um, I'll get one in a while. Just going out the gate. So if I just put you down there on the tripod a moment, you're too low for me, but <laughs> you should be able to, should be able to see. Let's have a look where I... Yeah, it was a bit dark, actually. Let's go back this way. Got to remember it's the middle of the night near enough here in England. So, here we go. So, I don't know if you can see me or not. <laughs> bit low. This door here, that's the door to the church. I mean, let's put this up here. Too low down there. Right, let's bring you up a bit higher. There we are. I don't know if you can really see this. It's a little bit dark on here to me, actually. But okay. Anyway, so this here, if you see me standing here. If you can see me. It's all waving to. It's not very good tonight. It's a bit dark on there. That's a bit better. Well, you can sort of see right this door here. That's the door there that Hugh Latimer would have gone through uh, in the English Reformation and preached in this church. Uh, probably the same door made of English oak. Uh, they last for ever, you know. So, but let's go for a little bit of a, a walk round. I'm just going to uh, lower you down a bit to make it easier to handle as I walk. Because if it's too long, you can't actually walk along with it any sense. So, just sorting out a couple of bits here. Right, okay. So, this is where we're going to be tonight for the meeting. Very historic round here. There, you can probably see behind me now. Um, there's the church tower. You can just about see that in the darkness there. So that's the church tower. That's uh, St. Edward, King and Martyr. Uh, and part of the English Reformation. Sylvia Perez, I can see you. Daphne Brooks, I can see you too. God bless you and welcome. We're on a little bit of an explore today. Come with me. We go for a little bit of a walk um, along here through historic Cambridge. I'm just going to bring you over here now to the sign. Here's the church sign. Now, let's get this in camera there. So you can see, I don't know, if, is it round the right way to you or back to front? No, it's back to front. Right. I'll have to do it this way then. I'll turn the camera around. I'll get it that way around. Not so easy operating in StreamYard, actually, as it is. I'm just directly on Facebook for some things. Um, but let's just do this. I want you to be able to see this for yourself. So let's get to that there camera there there okay that's good right i've turned the camera around so you've got a different camera angle now and you can see there's the church sign i can zoom that in or not or we can walk in right so you can read what it says there a parish church has stood here for about a thousand years St. Edward's was the cradle of the English Reformation. Can you read that there? So, and that's the church there, St. Edward, King and Martyr. So, I'll bring you back up again and I'll tell you some things. There's that. Let me turn that camera back around and then we'll get back onto it. Like I say, it's a bit awkward with stream mode. I've got to press about five different things in order to turn the camera around. Um, so it's a bit less user friendly than some other ways of doing it. But OK. So here we are back again. 
and you can see the sign uh the sign there behind me so this church is um rather unique and what's unique about this church behind me is normally in the church of england which was the state church or the national church um it was made so after king henry the eighth wanted to get rid of his wife and the pope told him no so at that point they were catholic but the pope said no you can't get rid of your wife you've got to stay married to your wife so henry the eighth had a massive tantrum king of england a huge rage and decided that that was it it was his divine right to be king of england and therefore if he wanted to marry somebody else no pope was going to tell him not to do that so henry then started or had started the church of england so that's how the church of england came into being what you call the anglican church church of england um because henry the eighth basically wanted to have another woman that wasn't his wife and if you've ever sit, heard some of the historical stories you know he had some of his wives killed and all sorts of things this was the king of england henry the eighth so uh, and that was the basis of the starting of the church of england was a man's adulterous lust really i mean to be if you want the truth you want a history i mean you can people try to make up all sorts of stuff to sugarcoat it but i mean ultimately that was the thing partly anyway so at that time britain broke away from the church of rome the catholic church and then started the church of england and then henry the eighth appointed people to be bishops and people like this and they went on this mad campaign all around britain smashing up um all houses of worship and prayer catholic places so many monasteries and places where the monks and the nuns lived and big huge incredible stone architecture places were raised to the ground in the rage and the anger of henry the eighth king of england now this church here saint edward uh, king and martyr was very very different in its day from the churches that were around it how it worked was that you had a bishop in an area and then there was a parish or an area with the bishop who was the leader of that area and uh, he held a lot of authority and power now when the reformation started and people started preaching a message that was not welcomed by certain churches and groups the bishop would say no preaching that stuff in any of our churches in any of the parishes that i'm responsible for however this church here saint edward king and martyr was under a different designation so this was not ruled or under the authority of a local bishop who could say i don't want any of that type of preaching in here and stop it or even worse perhaps have you killed or whatever they held a lot of power these people but this church and i've forgotten the actual name for it and i will find that out for you because i'm going to be in here tonight uh in a meet having a meeting um i can't remember the exact title but i will find it out but basically what it meant was it was directly under the authority of the crown and you know so the so the king or queen of england this church was under the authority of that not under the bishop of ely up the road ely is a town 13 miles from cambridge and there's ely cathedral an incredible place ely cathedral and the bishop's seat was in there so a bishop has his see or his seat inside the a cathedral and that's where the bishop is that's where he's that's where his bishopic throne is or whatever they call it i don't know all the terminology but um, that's where the throne of the it's all a bit overblown isn't it really but anyway that's where the throne of the bishop is anyway in the cathedral and he ruled the area around so all the parishes that came under the, the diocese 
that's the word I was looking for earlier, or, or the jurisdiction of the bishop into a certain geographical area, whatever is designated to the Bishop of Ely, for example. So he could tell in, in his, the entire diocese, the entire region, no preaching this or that in the church if he didn't like it, in the Church of England or didn't like it, so on. But this church was different, so Latimer and that were free to preach in here and preach the message of the Reformation. Now, later on, sadly, um, Hugh Latimer, Bishop Hugh Latimer, and former Bishop uh, Hugh Ridley were both burnt to death in the streets of Oxford um, as martyrs because they wouldn't agree with certain things to do with the church authorities. Uh, Latimer and Ridley, they were one time bishops of Worcester and London, would you believe? So men of God and yet other so-called men of God had them burnt in the street. In fact, I think Hugh Latimer, they first, um, he was tied to a stake and then they strangled him, I believe, and then set him on fire. Uh, along, along with Nicholas Ridley, together they were tied either side of a post, I think, and then they set them ablaze in the street. But some very famous quotes came out of that. They, something along the line, of, let us feed men, Mr. Ridley or something, and um, the fire they light today will never go out. So it, something like that. <laughs> There's a road sweep up there. But basically, he said... That, uh, as he was being burned to death, I think it was Hugh Latimer cried out, God, I pray that you would open the eyes of the King of England to the, to the message of the Reformation. And then finally, they, were, they succumbed to the flames and were consumed. So we honour today the memory of martyrs, people that have given their lives for the sake of the gospel and for freedom. And certainly... Hugh Latimer and Nicholas Ridley, they certainly did that as they were martyred in the street of Oxford many, many years ago. But in this very church here, St. Edward King and Martyr, this is where Latimer preached. The same pulpit is still there. And I will get pictures of that pulpit tonight. I might even be able to do a very short live broadcast from the pulpit of Latimer. Now, Generally speaking, nobody's allowed to go up in the pulpit for some reason. I don't really know why. Perhaps the age of it and they're worried that it might break. Because um, it's five, six hundred years old, this pulpit, five hundred years old. Um, but However, we might see if we can get possible, possibly get dispensation somewhere to preach a small gospel message from the pulpit that Latimer was in. I don't know, but I can only ask, I guess. They may let me do it. I am, in fact, an ordained minister. I know you see me on Facebook and you think, well, there's old Chris, but I am actually an ordained minister as well. So uh, I, maybe if I put on some ecclesiastical garb and come down here, they might actually let me up into the pulpit to preach. If I can, I would like to go live on Facebook from the pulpit of Latimer and to give you a live message from that very pulpit. So pray with me that God would give me favor to be able to do such a thing. We want to pray that the anointing of God that was on those that gathered here in Cambridge in the Reformation would fall upon the church. And that zeal, that hunger for truth would fall once again upon the church of Jesus Christ. So think of us tonight, 7.45 uh, tonight here uh, live in um, St. Edward, King and Martyr. I say live, and I, that's what, we've got a meeting in there, the Revival Hub. I don't know whether I can stream it from there or whether people would even be interested in doing that or even allow that. I don't really know. So I'll get back to you on that one. But um, if it is, you know, keep your eye out, have a look and, uh, you know, sit, see what happens. So, OK, so thank you for tuning in those of you around the world uh, it's been nice to be with you here this morning you hear the church bell
7 o'clock in the morning, that is 7 a.m. There you go, you heard the seven strikes. So one of the bells going off there. So that's tonight in there. I'll take you around the corner just before we go today. And uh, I'll show you... Uh... <laughs> I've got the tripod not quite high, as you can see. I've got to put this down a bit to move along. Because it's just nigh on impossible to do this like this. So, right, here we go. We'll go for a little walk through Cambridge, shall we? I say, welcome to Cambridge. So, in fact, we're just about to go past my favourite camera shop, actually. And uh, Campkin's Cameras, owned by Owen Howell. And uh, this is where this is where I get my camera from. Um, let me you up for a minute. This is all um, just setting up the tripod. I know they don't do all this jigging around on the BBC, but. Uh, Right, there we are. Managed to get set up now. <laughs> Wanna carry on. So there you can see uh, there's camera the uh, Campkins cameras anyway. This is Owen's shop, Owen Howe's shop. And uh this is where I've just got my new camera from actually. I've got a second hand camera from in here from Owen. And um seriously, if you need any um camera equipment uh, you need any servicing done on your cameras. Not these guys are the experts, I tell you. Campkin's cameras here in Kings Parade, Cambridge. Come on down and they will sort you out, get you going. They do a service as well. They do a lens cleaning service. They do all sorts of things, any printing, anything else like that that you want done. Campkin's cameras can do it for you. So come down and see Owen and the team. Owen recently... Um, had a large camera show here in Cambridge at the Guildhall, and it was absolutely fantastic. Really enjoyed it. And uh, so there we go. So there we can have a look to there again. There's, there's Campion's cameras. In fact, you see a sign up here. Look, let's go over here a bit. Up above my head. So you can see up there Campion's cameras, and there's Owen's sign there. Been there since 1952. So, if you need a camera, this is the place to come. Um, this, this is, in fact, where I got this camera from. Can you see this camera? Uh, this is an Olympus. Olympus OMD EM1. That's an Olympus. So you can see that's my new camera. First proper camera I've ever owned, actually. Never had one before. All the other pictures that you've ever seen me put on Facebook, they've always been on my mobile phone. So, but uh, now I've actually got a camera. Although, um, I had something really frustrating happen just now. Before I did the program, I was standing over the other side. In fact, if you look behind me now, look. There is the massive, massive Gothic Chapel of King's College, Cambridge. Can you see that? That huge building. That's the largest chapel like that in the whole world. Let's go over there for our final little bit of a chat, shall we? Here we are. Look, you're all over the place on the camera. <laughs> you're going dizzy. Whoa. Let's get over the road. I'm not trying to film it correctly. I could do if I wanted. <laughs> right. Right, okay. I'll set you up there. Whew. Um so there's King's College Chapel there, look. They have a lovely carol service uh, every Christmas in there. It's world famous, it's televised and everything. The carol service from King's College Cambridge. So there's something for you. Uh there I was I was gonna tell you something, I forgot almost larking around, I forgot what I was gonna say now. That's the trouble, isn't it? Go, on, go off on a tangent. And you forget what you're going to say. You're on a live program, Chris. Chris, concentrate. Get with the, oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. 
So what happened to me earlier, right, was I was at the back of King's College. So this is this is where this is um, King's Parade. This street here is called King's Parade. OK, and um, King's College entrance is, you know, there's well, there's one over there. You can see all these historic looking buildings over there. Let me take this down. So that's there. Look, you can see there's an entrance way, those two lights on it. How do I get finger in the camera? Uh, there. <laughs> What's it? It's all back to front, this. Uh, uh, it's hard to do this because it goes completely opposite there. <laughs> well, there's two lights. Are. Anyway, that's an entrance way to King's College, okay? The chapel is behind me over here. And, um, but what? So I was at the other entrance. Now, there's an area called the Bats in Cambridge. So the back of the college is over this way across some open land and there's a river and things like that. And I was over by the other entrance there earlier just this morning taking a, some photographs and that sort of thing. And then would you believe it? A fox came out and this fox came along the road, right? And he looked at me and I had, I had this camera here and I thought, oh, I can't believe it. He's that close. So I put the camera out. I thought he's going to run off because not foxes are very flighty normally. No, didn't move. So I'll get it and I'll get him in frame and I think I'm going to get the most incredible picture of an urban fox. Like, absolutely. He couldn't have gotten any closer, right? I press the button and the camera doesn't go off. And I'm like, oh, come on, like that, right? And my tripod, which at the moment has got my mobile phone on it, which I'm talking to you on now, which I was normally would use for taking my pictures was the other side of me and the fox. So there's no way I can go and get that one quickly and take his picture. He's going to run away. And this fox comes and he literally like walks over my feet. And he's right under me, right? And he just walks along very casually as if I'm his best friend in the world. And he's never... It, uh, and then he squeezed through the iron railings of King's College rear entrance and he went off and he's down this shot, right? There's a picture of him on this pathway going down there, walking through King's College. And so I get my camera, and I stick it through the thing, try and get a picture, and it doesn't go off again. And I'm like, I can't believe I've missed this picture. It's the shot of a lifetime, it was. And this camera wouldn't go off. This supposed, you've got to get a proper camera, Chris. You've got to become a proper cameraman, right? I've got this thing on there. I need it, you know, I... Nothing. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> If I'd have had my phone, I guarantee you I would have got it 100%. I am like lightning with this phone. I tell you, I'm mustard. I'm really hot with this phone again, pictures. The camera let me down, so black mark for the Olympus, I'm afraid. Uh, I mean, I must have done something wrong. I don't know, because I'm trying to be really... Cause it's, you know, this fox is going to go, and he's like, I could stroke the fox. He's so close, nearly, you know. If I bent down, I literally could have touched him. It was that close. Oh. So you better pray for me, because I need healing today. <laughs> I missed that photograph of a lifetime. I can't believe it. I'm, I'm really peeved about that, actually. Because I like getting pictures of animals and that. And this fox was there, and he was a lovely fox. And he, he, and he used to start walking past, like, hello. Uh, oh, there's a fox. And he's, like, on my feet. He's, like, right in front of me, like this. And, it, and the camera doesn't go off. <laughs> so there we are. Enough of my frustration. <laughs> I, I am going to attempt to get a cup of coffee now. I went to McDonald's just now, and they're supposed to open at 6 a.m., right? And I got a sign that they're not opening till 7 a.m. But we're not opening for and let's go. Routine maintenance. It's like, shouldn't you be doing the routine maintenance in the night when you're closed, not when you're supposed to be open in the morning? But anyway, so that's that. I think it's short staff. That's the truth. In the market as well, there's, you know, there, there's a coffee wagon in there. I might go there, actually. Shelley and Sue's market. Um, I don't know what you call it, like cafe. They do hot dogs, burgers, chips, you know, coffee, tea, coke, you know, like Coca-Cola, like meals, you know, all that sort of thing. But that's in the market square. So I might go for a little walk into the market. Um, the world's beginning to get up now. Lots of people are starting to come in. People are cycling. And um, this is a pedestrianised area where I am in Cambridge here. So through here. You see a cyclist there now. There's lots of cyclists come through. 
and this is a pedestrian. I mean, you can get some cars and vans and things through, like businesses and things like that, but um, not many. So, uh, so there we are. See some of the Christmas lights there along the street. Um, uh, there, can you see them there like that? So hard to point your finger because it's opposite the way to what you want it to go. So yeah, so there you are. You can see the lights there, the Christmas lights down there. Um, lots of like uh, council refuse lorries and road sweepers and that preparing the town and the market for the day's trading, clearing up all the mess that people make overnight uh, and that type of thing. But I'm gonna all I'm gonna do. I'm, this will be easy. I don't know. I was thinking of this before. I'm gonna take that off the tripod. <laughs> Put the tripod, put the tripod over my shoulder, and um, <laughs> see I've got the tripod on my shoulder now. Camera down there, and now we can walk along quite successfully through Cambridge. Now look at that. We're going down King's Parade. Behind us there is King's College Chapel. The sun beginning to emerge as we go down King Street. We're going to go here through into the Market Square. So you can see the market. This is uh, what we're just coming up to now is Great St. Mary's Church. Um, Great St. Mary's Church, you can see behind me there now. There's the tower. Um, that's where what a lot of the university church things happen. Um, the spot I'm standing in here right now outside Ryder and Ames. Now you'll see behind me. There's a company here, Ryder and Ames, and they, they do all sort of university outfits, you know, all the ties of the different colleges. So you can see all those ties in those boxes, those slots. All the coats of arms of the co colleges uh, down the bottom there. I can't really see it very well. But this is the spot the other day. Some of you may have seen me. Next to this sign here, you can see. What is it, John? I don't know. Anyway, this is the actual spot where I shook hands with the uh, with Prince Charles the other day, right here. So where you see me standing now is where I shook hands with the future King of England, Prince Charles, His Royal Highness Prince Charles, son of the Queen of England. He was here in Cambridge, and this is where I shook his hand. It was really quite funny. He came past, and there's thousands and thousands of people were here. I mean, you couldn't really see them all on the video because they were all down here as well we were up there but this is leading into the market square behind me there that's the market square and there was i don't know how many thousand people in here waiting to see prince charles but i'm back where we just saw it and i'm behind this barrier and i've got the tripod up with the mobile phone on and the mobile phone is broadcasting live to facebook youtube and twitter it's like it is now, right now. And uh, so we're in the market square now. You can see this is where the Cambridge market is. They're just getting set up at the moment. So some of the Christmas lights and things like that are through here. You'll see. There's some big Christmas tree here, look. See that? And there's like a... You can... You can walk... You can walk through it and stand there and have your picture taken with this big Christmas tree. Yeah. And then um, over here is the Guild Hall. You'll see, you'll see that in a second. I'll, I'll set it back up again and you'll be able to see it. Right. There we are. Terrible filming. Jumping all over the place. But don't mind. It's free, isn't it? <laughs> so there behind me, you can see that's the guild hall for the council. You can see all the lights on it there. That's quite nice. So all illuminated for Christmas. And this is the market. Um, if you saw an advert that I did the other day of for some for some chili sauce, did you see that advert? 
Well, that, that, that's people I know, Joyce and Les Gannon, they're, they're Christians. And they sell their chilli sauce here in the market. This is where I bought it, okay? So, I'm just going to... Uh, That's better. It's more manageable now. Because it's on full height. And you sort of walk along, it's dragging along on the floor. So this is the market here in Cambridge. A lot of the stalls are not set up yet. But it's a very vibrant market. Lots of um, different foods and things from around the world are here in the market. So you know, it's quite impressive, really. But it's early days yet. People aren't really up yet. So, anyway, I'm going off here to the wagon to get myself a cup of coffee. So, I'll say goodbye for now. Thanks for joining me. And um, but I'm going to go and get a cup of coffee now. So, there's a nice little wagon here. You can come and get coffee. Have a look at that. As you can see it, look. There you go. So you can go in there, get your teas and coffees when you come to the market. All right, I'll catch up with you again soon. Don't forget to share the program. I'll take care. Bye-bye.